Northeast Region Nalerigu Nalerigu is the capital of the Northeast Region of Ghana. It is located in the north of the country and was created in December 2018 after a referendum was voted upon to break it off the northern region. Nalerigo is one of the oldest kingdoms in Ghana, with the majority of the inhabitants engaging in buying and selling. The oldest kingdom in Ghana being a new regional capital, Nalerigo's media landscape has a lot of prospects. The people understand the role of media and use it accordingly for publicity of businesses and other activities. There's a need to nurture women as they are very innovative but are not business-minded. Mainly, women are into buying and selling. So, Narelugu is the capital of the newly created Northeast region, which was carved out of the Northern region. Um, it being a new region, the media landscape is, is still new. We found out that there was only one radio station. Um, there were previously two, but one had been, been closed down. So there was one media house that was in operation, which was a, a radio station. And what was happening was that um, in terms of uh, media houses having specific time slots for advertising or promotion of businesses, this particular um, radio station had that. So they had a, a segment um, and a program where people can advertise their business. And the rates were relatively affordable for, for, for the businesses in the region. So Narilugu happens to be a region that is very dominant in agricultural activities. Um, we found out that women um, mostly engaged in selling of farm produce in the markets. We were privileged to go to the, the Narilugu markets to see what, what goes on. And the market normally starts around two or three because that's when people from far away come into the markets to buy produce to go and sell in say Tamale. Um, one thing that we found out was that women were not into agro processing, um, for instance, like share butter. But what they did was they would pick the share seeds and rather sell them in bulk to companies that are into share production. On the cultural side, we got to know that Narelugu happens to be the first kingdom in, in Ghana. And tending to that history, there was an element of um, that was said that that was why the, the regional capital was, was brought to the place. We were privileged to engage with the first elder of the kingdom um, in the palace who gave us um, a rundown on economic activities in the region. However, though women do not engage in agro-processing and other economic activities, we found out that um, in terms of domestic um, activities, women were processing uh, things like tomato, pepper, dawa dawa, share butter, just for home consumption. But they were not looking at the commercial aspects of it. So if anything has to be done, the, the region needs more of um, workshops, seminars and summits that would boost the, the psyche of women and young people in the region to look at the many business opportunities that is around them. So in Narilugu, we're able to map out four organizations, being two radio stations, one photo studio, and then one cultural institution, which happens to be the Palace of the Nairi. Narilugu is a vast land with low population density. The people have a lot to learn in terms of digital skills. Though, some have already started acquiring this knowledge on their own and would be happy to get a helping hand. Opportunities abound in Agritech. Acquiring the skill set needed to take advantage of this opportunity would help bring prosperity into this land of opportunity. Nalerigu. The city is new, the region is new, and it's sparsely populated. 
There are vast lands full of opportunities. However, these opportunities have to be improved and perfected. We visited four tertiary institutions, two second cycle institutions, two vocational institutions, and one worker group. The challenges faced in Nalerigo include frequent power cuts that made it very difficult for the few processing companies around to be able to produce their products from share butter to granuts and yam. There's also a very low patronage of locally manufactured goods and as such people are discouraged to venture into entrepreneurship of that nature. They prefer to come down south and buy made in China goods and simply go and sell it up in the north since that has higher since there's a higher level of interest for such goods. Some ways of improving Alerigo's ecosystem in relation to human capital will be to introduce more solar-based products from simple torch lights to lamps, power banks that are solar powered since this is going to take advantage of the high amount of sunshine over there and also reduce dependence on electricity from the power companies. In Malerigu, there is very little awareness for quality standards in product branding and packaging. So people are selling, say, shea butter in this very raw form in a calabash, open. So it can gather dust and doesn't really look appealing. So if even the people of the town are not finding it appealing, how much more the people in the south? So if they are able to improve the quality standard that they apply, that will make the product sell because it's already very cheap compared to anywhere else. So in Nalarigu, we visited four tertiary institutions, including the nursing training college, where they were very happy to have us there. They expressed a lot of interest in even having a hub on their campus. They made us aware that they organized entrepreneurship classes for their students and are happy to have any form of support to improve the level of knowledge that their students have in relation to the ideas they have brewing in their heads. Economic activities in Nalerigo were not as active as compared to other regions we visited, as there were very few institutions, low literacy rates, and low entrepreneur opportunities within the region. This can be attributed to the low presence of financial institutions within the region, as well as a small market size. Our engagements in Nalerigo were very brief. This is because it's a cutout or a newly created region, making, having, making it have very few institutions there we were able to engage with. We got to engage with just one community rural bank, one savings and loan, and then one credit union. These were the only ones there available in the region. With that, it gives the financial, the access to finances from, for the startups at a low pace because they are just a few. All startups cannot depend on them or they can provide for all the startups in the region. So this is giving them, a, this is giving the startups a slow rate of bringing out their businesses because they don't get much support from the institutions there. We couldn't get a chance to talk to some angel investors in the region because most of them that we are identifying are there, they actually do not live there. They are situated in other parts of the country. So we didn't get the chance to be able to talk to them on the front of the local level. But with the opportunity we realized with that is that with the local, with the institutions that are there, we notice that they are willing to support, they are willing to train, they are willing to give SME. They actually have a special loan for small businesses, that is the SME loan. So they are willing to support the startups and engage them as well. Some recommendations we'll give to Nalewigu is that they, they need to get people to spring up more institutions there or find ways of getting support into the region to be able to support startups to be able to go the entrepreneurial level in the region. The city of Nalerigu is basically a new and developing city. There were fewer economic centers and activities, having us interact with few businesses. Most of the indigents are not well informed and coincide with traditional methods. However, it is to be said 
the area is on the verge of foundational and economic improvement. So with our engagement in Narilugu, that's the northeast region, and we found out that the place is a developing city, so most of the businesses were not really IT inclined at all. We found out a percentage of like 5% of the businesses there were IT inclined. The number of companies that we visited there were about 20, uh, including lots of popular businesses and health and also some lodges and hotels as well. In terms of like the agricultural nature of the city, we found out that the most cultivated produce there was rice, where lots of the farmers engage in group farming to help reduce their workload as well. Being a newly created regional capital, Nalarigu has several business opportunities that are untapped. This needs to be identified and nurtured. There's also the need to identify and celebrate local entrepreneurs with a good track record to serve as a shining example to other young generations or startups. Nalarigu, which happens to be one of the newly created regions in the northern region, is barely developed in, in terms of infrastructures, in terms of supports. So aside um, the business advisory center under the NBSSI, which is more as a strong pillar, creating the support system for the few formalized businesses, they, there's, there's more room for improvement in that space because since the focal point there is more of what petty trading, tabletop businesses. So there's there's no avenue to create jobs for others under one uh, petty trade. So with the requisite exposure and skill sets, there could be more jobs created, whilst also what uh, creating and making impact in the lives of the people there. So since the small space, we visited three um, social enterprises, two business advisory centers and one from my business. Nalerigo is an ecosystem that is being set up by the government as it was created from the northern region. The ecosystem lags behind in a lot of policy support and would require policy interventions to grow. The key policy supports available included the planting for food and jobs and access to matching grant facility through the Business Advisory Center, BAC, of the NBSSI in the ecosystem. Government regulatory and business formalization services have to be accessed from Tamale or Bogatanga. So with the Northeast region, the ecosystem that we worked with was the Nalerugu ecosystem. And with the Nalerugu ecosystem, it saddens me to say that, well, it's a new region, just joined the other regions that are coming up in the country. But there was a good thing. The good thing was that of the Upper East, of Upper East and the Upper West, we didn't have local economic development committees. It was the first disassembly from our engagements around the country that had a local economic development committee that steered the group of economic activities within the ecosystem. Unfortunately, the ecosystem lacked funds to be able to undertake activities that the committee brought up. So another interesting finding from the Nalerico ecosystem was the fact that a lot of youth seem to be interested in white color jobs and would like to earn money that would be on a monthly basis without necessarily venturing into entrepreneurial activities. So projects and initiatives that have been brought in that is supposed to upskill them, provide them with skills development training, seminars, has been difficult for to get participation from the part of most of the youth. But then, it's not only from the youth side. Another aspect that also came out from youth not being able to actively participate in some of these activities, such as the entrepreneurial training programs, were the fact that the linkage roads were very bad and most of them could not commit from higher, longer distances. And so we realized that there will be the need for any of such support services or programs that will be coming up to have a component that would address transportation challenges for most of the people who would want to access services. A discouraging component too was the fact that all major formal, that's public sector related services were centered within the Gambaga area. And so 
the other aspects or other areas of the northeast region would have to move from longer distances in order for them to come to the central point where they could access some of these services but in all the northeast does the nalirugu ecosystem really lack a lot of public sector offices such as the registrar general's department the regulatory organizations and even finance support organizations such as mass law youth support organizations such as NYA because you realize that the offices in there are understaffed and smaller to meet the demands of the people then the people themselves also would need a habit change